Hello, my name is Jose Garcia, and in this video, I'm going to show you uh, what copy geometry and published geometry is. Uh, ignore the little errors that I have on this robot here. Uh, these are just the errors that I got from importing it, but that will not impact our uh, tutorial here. So published geometry and copy geometry are two commands that uh, help you if you are working in what's called a top-down design. So what that means is if you have, for example, this robot and you want to give a certain group certain features of this robot so that they can work with it, uh, you can do that through published geometry and copy geometry. A couple of little notes here. Uh, you do not need to publish geometry to have copy geometry work. So copy geometry will allow you to grab surfaces, datums, annotations, uh, curves, uh, but you don't necessarily need to publish them. Now there is a pro and con to that, of course. The pro, of course, is that you do not have to wait for your higher up to give you any geometry. You can just go in there and grab whatever curve, surface, or annotation you need. Uh, the con is that it allows people to just really go haywire and sometimes they can grab things that they're not supposed to grab. Uh, and it can get really hectic really fast. So that's where published geometry comes into play. So published geometry is meant for the higher up who dictates what goes where. So for example, let's take a look at this robot here. Uh, there was one instance where I worked with a group that uh, had to work on the end effector and then another one that had to work on the railing system for this robot. So I, as the uh, lead in this project, gave him the interface for the end effector and the interface for this uh, robot here to mount to. Of course, these are two separate groups, uh, so they each had to have a different published geometry. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example here and see how you can use these two commands. And ultimately, you will find out if these commands are for you. So let's say that, for example, we have to give a certain group. First of all, let me hide these annotations here uh, and the datums. Let's say that I have to give a certain group this interface here, this face, because it has the holes for the end effector mount. Another group, the railing group, is going to work with this interface here. And so this is what allows the robot to be mounted. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to publish both of these faces to these respective groups. Now, a couple of important things. You cannot use published geometry in an assembly. You have to activate the part and publish that. Uh, so that's very, very important. So in this case, I need to find what part this is. Uh, and I have a pretty good idea, but you know, let's just go ahead and cycle through them. It looks like that interface happens to be the second part file here. Uh, so if I right click on this and activate it, look at it here, you can see that it makes that the active part. So I can work on this part if I wish. From here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the tools section located here, tools, and then I'm going to say publish geometry. Uh, before I do this, however, I noticed that a lot of my features are missing here. So I'm going to go into settings, tree filters, and just kind of enable everything. Um, that way I know that uh, at least I can see all the things that I'm working with. Okay. So now I'm going to go over and say publish geometry located here. So as soon as I activate that command, it gives me the ability to select certain references to publish to these groups. Uh, so you can do surface sets, chains, or references, and even annotations here. Uh, but for this case, I'm going to leave it on surface sets. So I'm going to say publish this surface set here, like so. As you can see, it turns green. Now, I highly recommend that as you do this, your group comes up with a naming convention for these uh, published geometries. So I'm going to go into properties, and then from here, I will simply call this EF group for the end effector group. 
So I will hit the enter key there and then hit the green check mark. If you expand the part that you were just in, like so, you can see that there is now a copy geometry. I'm sorry, a published geometry called EF group there. So now we need to go to this bottom portion here and I need to find out what part that is and it seems to be this last portion here. So I'm gonna activate this part and I will do the exact same thing. I will say publish geometry, surface set. I will choose this surface there. And then of course in properties, I'm gonna give this a name. So I will call this the rail group. And then I will hit the green check mark. So now that I have this, uh, this publish geometry. What I can do is now create part files within this assembly or away from the assembly that I can then tell to reference these published geometries. And if you're curious, if you expand this portion as well, you can see that there's a published geometry there called rail group. So I, as the lead, have now published these geometries to these groups. So now I tell them, okay, here are the published geometries. You can go in there and grab them. And so now they can't just go in there and grab whatever they want. I am the one that is dictating what they can take and what they cannot take. Uh, there is a huge benefit to this. And the benefit is that if later on down the line, uh, for example, you want to add more references to this rail group, for example, this rail group, published geometry, you can push it through and it'll update on every single part that these folks have worked on. Whereas if you don't publish it and you just let people grab whatever they want, uh, they will have to go into each and every single part and re-grab the reference uh, that uh, you, know, you might need down the line. So there is a pretty big benefit to this method. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make the assembly the active part. And again, I can do that by right clicking and saying activate. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file. So let's say I'm gonna create a new part file. I'm gonna come up here and say create. So from here, it asks you to name the part. So we'll just call this EF plate for the end effector plate. Uh, go ahead and say OK. Copy from existing. I do want to use all these default options. So I'm going to say OK. Now, in this instance, since I'm working with a top down design, I am simply going to change this constraint from automatic to default. So, what does that do? It aligns it ceases to ceases of the assembly coordinate system. And I can hit the green check mark. So, now what I'm going to do is I am going to activate the this EF plate. So we'll right click and say activate. Then from here, I will say copy geometry located right there. So we'll say copy geometry. Now from here, what I can do, if I hover over that particular copy geometry, you can see that I can select it from there or if I wish, I can expand this assembly here and I can choose it from the model tree. So you have two options. You can either choose it through this uh, assembly graphics located here, or you can choose it from the model tree. So now that I have selected it, as you can see here from the model tree, I can hit the green check mark and the part or the surface is now placed inside of my brand new part. So if I open this EF plate, you can see now that there's my surface there. So now let's say that you create a new part file, but you don't want to create it within this assembly because reasons, right? Maybe there's something in here uh, that could take forever to load and you only need the parts to grab that reference from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into file new. This is the, uh, I'm going to call this the rail placement. OK. 
okay. And so of course I have my datums hidden for clarity purposes. But once I am here, what I'm gonna do is go over into copy geometry located here. Now from here, what it's asking me is do I want to open a file or do I wanna go with another method? In this case, I'm gonna say open a model which geometry will be copied. So I will open that. And then I will say uh, the part that is in session is the one that I am interested in. The one that happens to have the part that I need is this LRMate 200 base ID 51. So then I will say open. Uh, I do want to place this in the default location. Uh, so what does this menu mean? It means that you can either have the coordinate system be at the assembly level and then have the surface maybe floating away or you can tie coordinate systems together so that when you import this part, the coordinate system of the rail, for example, the rail housing, uh, is the same as your part coordinate system. Uh, is, as you saw in the previous example, when we imported that surface, the uh, surface was floating you know, somewhere out in space and the coordinate system was placed in its usual location. So you can change that behavior from this placement window. In this case, I will leave it at default, and then I will say OK. So from here, I have to come over into the references, and it says click here to add item. So we'll hit that little button there. And as you can see, when I rotate it, I can either choose it from this tiny little window, or I can come over into the model tree here and choose it from that window as well. I'm a really big fan of choosing it from the model tree. Uh, so I will choose it from the model tree here. And then I will hit the green check mark. And as you can see, there's our brand new surface. So let me show you what happens if, you know, later on down the line, you are doing this uh, and you say, oh, darn, I need to include something else in there because the group needs it, right? Uh, or maybe some circumstances have changed and you need to push through a new update. Uh, if they didn't go through with this method, if you didn't publish anything, what you will have to do is you know, go into every part and grab that reference for each brand new part and that would be incredibly tedious. Whereas here, once we edit this published geometry and push a new surface in there, it'll automatically push it to all these other folks. So if I come over here into my assembly again, located here. So as you can see, this is a pretty advanced topic. Uh, so hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of Creo. But if you don't, uh, I do have a couple of other tutorials that are uh, on my channel and uh, a couple more that I'm going to be coming out with. So stay tuned for those. But let's say that I come back into the LRMate base ID 51. I activate it. Right? And I say, well, you know what? I forgot to include maybe these four surfaces or maybe, just maybe, uh, I need to include, uh, you know, maybe this, this uh, stand here. So I'm gonna right click on the rail group there, the published geometry and say edit definition. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say details. Uh, I'm sorry, not details. I'll hit cancel on that. Uh, from here, I can actually you know, select the surfaces by holding the control key and selecting the surfaces that I need. So let's say that I need these four surfaces there and this sort of funky geometry that I have there. So now that I have those, I can hit the green check mark. Okay. And now that you have successfully published those surfaces, if you go into the part that you created, the new part called rail, I think it was called rail housing, if you come to, or rail placement, and then you regenerate control G, you can see that we have successfully pushed those new surfaces onto this part. And now if other people had, you know, these uh, additional parts that reference this, 
they would all get that same update. They wouldn't have to go in there and grab these extra surfaces, which is really, really nice. So I hope you learned something about published geometry and copy geometry. If you have any further questions, please comment below. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.